I guess everybody's going to be very appreciative of this show that we are going to do today. Incidentally, Happy New Year. And speaking of Happy New Year, that's what this show is going to be about. You know, every year, you know, we make sometimes false promises to ourselves as it relates to what kind of changes we're going to make for the new year, what we're going to do different, and all of that gobbledygook. Well, the purpose of this show today is to move the gobbledygook into a direction that's going to be something real and meaningful and measurable and productive for you. So if you would, I think that you should pay particular attention to this show because we all do it. The first of every year we all talk about, yeah, I'm going to do this and I ain't going to do that and I'm going to move in this direction and I'm not going to move. But oftentimes, too often, frankly, after January the 18th, you know, we've forgotten what we said we were going to do and move into that old direction. So I am very happy today to have uh, an expert and some participants in a New Year venture, and we're going to try to impart some information that will help your New Year to be productive and give you some direct direction on some of the things that you can do to, 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 to bring those resolutions to fruition. This is a call to action. A call to action. This is a call to action. A call to action. And I'm your host, Alex Habersham, and I'm so happy to have with me today uh, Mr. Eric Fuller. So, Phil, that's correct? That's correct. You okay, got it. got it this time. Okay, and Miss Mercia, that pronounces like Persia, uh, <laughs> Fuller, who is uh, Eric's wife, and those of our participants in the show today, and we've got an expert with us in the person of Miss Paula Sims, who is a servant. Well, I'm not going to tell you what she is. I'm going to let her tell you herself. So at this point, I'd just like for everybody to just do a short bow on who you are and what you do, and then we'll talk about what you all did following the advice of Miss Sims that kind of helped you to bring some resolutions and some promises that you made in 13 to fruition, and I understand you're going to do the same thing in 14. Okay? Um, my name is Eric Fuller. I am a, a public school teacher here in Bill County. I teach 8th grade math. And I am a husband of the beautiful Marcia Fuller and the father of my wonderful daughters who's sitting out in the audience, Erica and Macy Fuller. Uh, I'm 41 and I love to organize and follow uh, best practices with respect to running um, a household. Marcia? And I'm Marcia Fuller. I am an EIP teacher at Rosa Taylor. I was born in Macon, Georgia. I graduated from Northeast High School. I further got my degree at Georgia Southern University. I got my master's from Wesleyan College, and now I'm working on my doctoral degree from North Central University. I have been in education, this is my 20th year in education, and I'm very proud to be a teacher in the Beale County School System. And I'm very, very proud of both of you for a couple of reasons. Paul, I'm not gonna steal too much of your time, but it warms my heart, frankly, to see a husband and a wife you know, together, who, you know, who do things together and, and, and live together and try to set goals and objectives together. So I think that sets a good example, you know, for, for the community and for young people, uh, married and unmarried, you know, that, that want to be successful in life. And I, and I really, really thank you for teaching. You know, a lot of people, you know, people tell service, service people, you know, military people, deservedly so, said, well, thanks for all you do. Well, guess what? Teachers deserve yes. that same kind of thanks and recognition. So I want to publicly thank you all for your service to the community. Every time I think about teaching, I think about that sign that says, if you can read this, thank a teacher. <laughs> you know, so that's, that's very, very important. Uh, Ms. Sims? Hi, I'm Paula Sims. I am the CEO of Community Development System, which is a behavioral health agency here in Macon, Georgia. We actually have two offices. Our corporate office is located here in Macon, Georgia, and uh, also a satellite office in Columbus, Georgia, and we're just uh, starting a site in Dublin, Georgia. 
I'm a licensed professional counselor, national certified counselor, national certified school counselor, and I have started this journey of doing a lot of life coaching, which I've been doing that in the past four or five years. And I am so happy to be here with you. I'm so happy to have you here too. Well, I think that's the key word, you know, coaching. Yes. Life's coaching. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was thinking about talking with my uh, producers, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Crumb, about what we could do the first of this year that would have some meaning. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of dawned on me that we should do something that can help people get through the rest of this year. Mm -hmm. And one thing that one has to do or people have to do is try to get themselves psychologically and plan and whatever. So talk about what you did that kind of inspired. Tell the story about, you know, how you all kind of hooked up. Kind of hooked up. Okay, well, I, it was actually the the ending of the year 2011. Is that 2011 no. or 2012? 2012, um, I was working um, along with um, Dr. Rundrick Williamson with Perspectives TV. I was his, um, the uh, uh, therapist for his set. And we had talked about New, Year, New Year's resolutions and what people needed to do. A lot of people don't understand about what makes up the whole person. And I thought it was important that, because people kept hitting and missing. I would hear people say, well, you know, I've done this, but I'm still not feeling fulfilled. What do we do? So I set out to, with a lot of the Facebook friends and through perspective, these six or seven areas that I wanted people to focus on um, in their lives and set um, goals, not only goals, realistic goals that would be attainable throughout the year and um, of course this couple was probably first to, to, to chime in and say okay they had bought into what I was saying, they wanted to know a little bit more about the details about it. what do you mean about the particulars of, um, I think it was a mental, mental. and mental and, um, mental and education. Me mental and education, that's one of them. You had a spiritual component, there was a personal family mm -hmm. component, there's also a financial career component. All of these things really make up the total person. And um, so that's pretty much how we kind of came in contact and then they started writing their plans and then this year after we talked, just the same day we talked, she had sent an email over to me saying, we're setting our goals for the year 2014, thank you for blessing our family. And it, it, it felt really good to know that something that I had instructed to do actually worked right. and had been carried through throughout the year. Because some people mid-year, mid-stream would stop and say, oh, this is not working. But um, So I'm, I'm really interested in everybody hearing kind of what they, the, the, the goals that they said and, and kind of how it played out in the end. It, it was really awesome. Who wants to go first? Well, you can go. Well, we, we thought about, um, you know, last year I remember and, and we've always been uh, a family, if you would, talking about organization and finances and so forth. But um, last year when she kind of presented this to me, it was a little bit more comprehensive. It was just not just the financial component for the year or getting in shape. It was comprehensive. And as you can see, there are aspects there that maybe I'm pretty sure I would not have thought about. And so we wanted to be sure that first um, to set some constraints, meaning we wanted to be sure that it aligned with what God would have for our home. We wanted to be sure that whatever goal we set did not undermine the family. And then thirdly, we wanted to be sure that um, it didn't undermine us as individuals. Because sometimes when we set goals, um, a dominant character in the family can set the goals hmm. and it can undermine the dreams and the aspirations of one of the family members. Absolutely. So we wanted to be sure that we set those constraints. And then we went off to our individual room first <laughs> with this criteria and set our goals and then we came back together and came with a comprehensive plan that had buy-in because it took consideration what God had for our family, what we wanted for the family, and then what we wanted as individuals. And from that premise, we started setting our goals. And those areas were, the first area was home and family. And we set those goals based on Eric and I's um, goals and the girls' goals. We had them to um, be a part of it. So we had our, fam our home and family goals. We just did three because we didn't want to overwhelm ourselves. Mm -hmm. So for instance, one of our goals were monthly family dates. And so we actually got very specific because if you just say monthly family dates, that may or may not happen. And so we decided we would break it up. One weekend, I would have the girls and do an activity. One weekend, Eric would have one. And then one weekend, it would be the whole entire family. 
Then we also said monthly dates with each other. And Eric had um, divided the house into areas. Everyone had an area that they were going to keep clean for the house. And so my part was do my part clean, cleaning the house. And I just said that would be done 15 minutes every day just so we could be sure that that was done. The other areas that Paula gave us were financial and career, physical and health, spiritual, social and cultural, mental and education. And How far do you want us to go about that? And, and well, one thing we wanted to be sure is that when you start off, it's important that um, the husband and wife basically, once they understand the constraints, you know, first we don't, we understand what God wants for the family. We understand, um, how we want to be sure we don't undermine the family itself. And then we want to honor the individual because just because you get married doesn't mean I still don't want to ride a motorcycle one day or yeah. Murray wants to be a Zumba uh, <laughs> expert. Those dreams are still there, so you don't want to crush those as I play the role of being dad or, or she plays the role of being mom. We want to recognize those because that is still you. But in, in setting goals, we have, we have a vision. It becomes a combined vision for the family. And as we start to kind of create that vision together, um, we have to break it down to smaller goals. It has to break down to a monthly, some are weekly, and then some are daily, specifically like exercising or even language acquisition. If you don't do it every day, you will never get there. So that's kind of what we started with. And then um, after we set those goals, we have to have a process in place to be sure that's actually happening on Sunday. We typically will sit down and lay off the week wow. and say, well, what is Erica's schedule? What does Mace, where does Mace have to be? Or you have a late meeting on Monday, I have a late one on Friday, I need to do this, you need to do that. And then we kind of craft this weekly schedule, and then we coordinate the week. So put in our iPhones and everything is coordinated. So there's no question, no stress, no surprises. And that really empowers us through the week. But it started with the big picture that upon what she presented to us is that here are the different components, but we started with the big picture, then we broke it down into smaller pieces, and then um, we had it, what we had to do day by day. And at the same time, and when we ever have a conflict between two good things, we go back to our priority. What well, honors, honor, honors God, and then if God is honored by both of them, well, then which one is best for the family? Mm -hmm. And then that will break the tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. And then if that doesn't break the tie, then maybe we just sit still. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, that's phenomenal. Uh, Ms. Sam, talk a little bit about your qualifications and your experience. Well, I have um, actually worked in the community for more than 15 to 20 years. I started out actually with um, Bibb County Public, I mean, Bibb County Defects, I'm sorry, Department of Family and Children Services. Uh, and I worked in various um, parts of that agency, but more specifically the Welfare to Work Program. So um, at the base and heart of everything that I've done and touched professionally has been, it's been a motivational component. Um, after that, I also worked with River Age Behavioral Health um, in the Child and Adolescence Unit as a therapist. Um, and I left there and went um, finally and worked for um, Bibb County Public Schools as a school counselor for 11 years in Raleigh Elementary School, which um, I gained a lot of stuff, good stuff from, from that school, from the other professionals, from the children, from the parents. And finally after that, leaving to go and start my own company, which um, you know, I have worked many years in dealing with children and motivating them and, and getting them to change. I guess what, what really happened in between that, in between teaching at a college level, because I, I taught some psychology courses at both Macon State and Central Georgia Tech, I started to see um, that part of me that could actually motivate adults. Um, and I thought that my niche was maybe just children, but it is children and families. And so, that kind of led me to do a lot of um, life coaching. I started taking some um, extra courses after uh, finishing my uh, master's and EDS degree, and I really liked it. Matter of fact, each morning through my Facebook, it's a vehicle for me to use some of my life coaching stuff. I will post uh, motivational sayings every every morning, uh, without a doubt, except you know I had a death in the family, and it kind of stopped for a couple of weeks. But outside of that, every morning, I'm going to put something up motivational that may help somebody's life. So the life coaching has been just kind of itching at me for a minute. And um, I finally, you know, uh, found it in myself that I'm just going to have to kind of push away a little bit from CDS and kind of just make this happen. I, I really do believe it's in God's will for me to do that. Well, we're going to talk more specifically when we come back 
about what kind of suggestions you have for, for the new year and making resolutions to kind of supplement uh, what the Fullers have done. This is a call to action. A call, a call to, to action. action. We'll be right back. We're back. Happily, happily back, and we're happy to be back. This is a call to action. A call to action. We're going to continue our conversations with uh, Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Fuller, uh, Eric and Marcia, who's a married couple, both of whom are educators. And uh, Marcia's laughing. I hope I'm not tearing up her name. <laughs> and uh, our certified uh, licensed and certified counselor, uh, Ms. Paula Sims. And the objective of this show today is to, first of all, look at uh, making resolutions from a historical uh, perspective and making resolutions from a futuristic perspective. Now, we have this couple on with us today who historically, at the beginning of 2013, made some resolutions, and they found it very beneficial. Now, those resolutions that were made were as a result of Ms. Sims posting some suggestions on her Facebook page as it relates to, because her profession uh, 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 positions her to be able to give advice to people on several issues, mental health and uh, life coaching and that kind of stuff. But what she wanted to do last year in December was to post, uh, 2012 in December, post some information that would help individuals, you know, plan that year and, live more effectively and live more meaningfully. And as a result of that, you know, the fuller said, wow, we can do this. And they did do it and they did it very successfully. So we want to move to another point now where I want you to, you know, just kind of give an overview of the kind of suggestions that you're going to make to the community, to our followers and to our listeners and the individuals who really understand that you're never totally there. Whatever you're trying to do, you're never totally there. But that you can graduate toward where you want to be, like Mr. Fuller said, on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Right. So we wanted you to kind of recap those points and um, talk to, uh, give some pointers on how, you know, individuals may uh, be real effective in their resolutions mm -hmm. like the uh, Fuller's are. Let me go back because I always like to start with the basis of why we need to set goals because when you're looking at a New Year's resolution, some of the things that we really don't think about is um, around Thanksgiving and Christmas, those are the holidays. And, and you know, it's um, kind of contradictory because it's supposed to be a time when we're really happy. Um, and a lot of times we are, but then it, it also brings some negative emotions too as well. For example, you know, you find that people go out financially and put themselves out there, you know, um, trying to buy the expensive gifts and, and the toys for the kids or whatnot, and which at the end of the year leaves them, you know, for one day, and then it's like I've used all this credit card and my money, and, and I'm in debt. That that's going to bring some negative emotions. The second thing I can think about is, you know, you have a, a lot of um, thoughts about loss of loved ones that that you know you would have loved to have been to celebrate Christmas with that wasn't here. And then finally, I, I think about when you are, it's always good to see family, but sometimes when you have unresolved issues that you've not really dealt with with family members and you get together during Christmas time, it brings on some unwanted emotions. So from there, you're taking all of that and these things that probably over the years you haven't dealt with, here we are at New Year's Eve. And so what do we do? You know, And so... Um, I don't want to talk about more of the deeper rooted um, kind of issues that people have because that's that's going to require you know something totally different. But we're talking about the surface kind of things as, as it relates to money, as it relates to I didn't spend enough time with my family, or where's my life going. I think if they will first have to admit to the things that they do well, they do not so well, and sometimes that's hard for people to do, and then start setting goals on these the different um, areas, which is the home and the family. We have um, financial and career, physical health, um, spiritual. You have social, cultural, 
and mental and education. Let me give you an example, let's say physical. You have a person that um, for the year, or let's just say for the last two months, um, uh, uh, November and December, is just eating themselves away. Stop and talking now, about it. Stop talking about it. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh Stop my God, about me. what do I do? You know, I'm stressed out because I've got all of this weight on me. What do I do? So, you know, you have to set realistic goals. If that's something that's really important at the top of your list, then let's set a goal. Okay, let's say we want to lose maybe 20 to 25 pounds um, by May. Okay, and really, like um, Eric was saying, okay, that's the overall goal. But how do you get to doing those things is going to be equally important. Okay, so I'm going to walk two times a week, and I'm going to drink water, I'm going to do this. All of that is important for you to have down because, you know, because as the year goes, there are other things that come into play that could just kick you out of your game. So you want to be able to, just like they have it written down, to go back and say, okay, we said that we were going to do this. And I think Merger and I talked, and she was saying, tell them a little bit about how your days are when you're talking about with Zumba and how Eric kind of came in chimes in to do the, the things with the kids. Um, okay, after I had my second child, I had gained 65 pounds. And so I carried that weight because, of course, you only need to gain about 30 pounds in the pregnancy. So I carried that weight for a long time. So one of my goals was to lose weight. And after I lost the weight, I knew I had to maintain it because I had lost weight before, but again, I put on all that weight. So one of my um, goals for 2013 was to maintain my weight loss. And how I was going to do that was um, by weighing in monthly at Weight Watchers, exercising at least three days a week, and that would be based on our weekly schedule. And I was going to get my Zumba license, but I probably won't get that right now because I have other things I need to get done. But how we did that with the exercising, we know that two days a week I will exercise. I go Friday nights at the Wellness Center at 5.30. Eric makes sure he gets the girls. We get nothing to interfere with that Friday night dancing with weight class. And then I go to Zumba on Saturday mornings at 9. And so Eric makes sure he gets the girls. I don't have to worry about the girls. That is my time to go and exercise. So we have the schedule that is not interrupted. And so even like Paula said, like in November and December, some days I was like, oh, Eric, I don't want to go today. And he'll say, remember your goal. Hey. Remember you want to um, maintain that weight loss. And I'm proud to say we're in January and I even lost a pound. So I did not gain any weight. Mm -hmm. I actually lost a pound because we continue to keep that goal mm -hmm. in front of us. And he has his exercise time in the morning, early in the morning. So I know that it's my responsibility to make sure the breakfast is done and I do whatever morning activities that has to be done. Wow. Wow which is huge, you know, and another thing I want to say with, with all the areas, not pushing um, spirituality on anybody, you know, but in, in all of the, the uh, areas that I call, I think spiritual is probably one of the most important. You know, whoever, you know, your higher person is that you believe in, but, you know, for me it is God. And having him in my life and, and, and making sure that I'm, I'm in church and making sure that I have a personal relationship jump starts everything else um, for me. And I think, um, and I talked to her about that. And when we talked about um, evaluation, because evaluation is always good to go back. They looked at the 2013 goals and said, okay, well, there were cer certain things that we didn't do as well. So they reevaluated to say, okay, do we really want to do this? No, we don't. We, that's not as important anymore. We want to do this. And I said, well, tell me what you did really well. And one of those things were um, spiritual, uh, which I, I knew. Um, I've known them for a while, and, and very, uh, they are churchgoers and very close to the Lord. So um, I thought it was just kind of awesome how they had already done it. And I was like, oh, my God, this is just going to be great for you to talk about and people to pattern after what, you, what you've done. That's absolutely phenomenal. Well, this is a call to action. A call call to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham, and we're continuing our discussion with Mr. and Mrs. Eric Fuller and Ms. Paula Sims, who is the CEO of the Community Consul Development System. Community Development System, which is a counseling organization. So what we want to do with these last few minutes, uh, Ms. Paula, is let's kind of give individuals some advice on, say, let's get started. 
Okay. I want you to tell them, now let's get started. And when they see or hear this, I want them to have some direction. Which way we go? On which way to go, what they can do tomorrow, you know, to kind of get started on having meaningful and measurable resolutions. Okay. Well, we talked about the different areas that we want to look at, but again, what's going to be important is looking at where are you struggling in your life? That's real important. You have to be able to look in the, what I call the looking glass cell, to be able to see what it is that keeps you from growing and being the full potential of an individual that you want to be. Once you identify what those areas are in your life, then you should look at the areas that we've talked about um, to see where you fit in that. Um, I would say if we have, which is it's really good to always to use at least six, all six of those areas, because that makes up the total person. So, but I would, I would suggest once you've done this um, scan of the things that you really need to work on, let's look at whether they fit in those areas. And then we want to come up with at least two or three things that you'd like to do in each one of those groups. Right and a time frame right. to, to attach to that. Right. Um, well, let me, let me let you do this quickly okay. while we got the time. I know you're going to post some more information about all of this on your Facebook, and I want you to continue where you left off, but go ahead and um, give us your Facebook page. Uh, I am. I guess if you're just going to Facebook and you type in Paula McGee Sims, Paula Sims, Paula Sims, okay. Paula McGee Sims, it's not listed as the LPC, just Paula McGee Sims. Okay. Um, I would gladly accept your and, friend and, request. And then, and then you're going to post that information. Yes. And then uh, Miss Sims, I understand, has some aspiration of a book that's not Facebook. She <laughs> got some. She got some real book aspirations. And she has she has done guest articles, and she's a very very. Uh, learned and, and qualified individual who can give counseling and, and information of that nature. So I'm encouraging her to do so because it's extremely important that uh, that uh, that this the information that she can provide is given to the community. So suppose somebody wanted to ask you a question, can they email you or post? You know, send your message on Facebook. They can. Or post um, actually, my email address is psims at c as in Charlie, d as in darling, s as in Sam, g as in girl, a as in apple dot org. psims at cdsga dot org. cdsga. psims at cdsga dot org. Yes. Okay. Well, is there any other information that you want to say very quickly? No, you can't say it more. Uh, we got one minute. <laughs> okay, I want to thank uh, Mr. and Mrs. Fuller. I want to congratulate you all again on being uh, uh, instructors and teachers. I appreciate what you do. I appreciate what you do for the community, and I want to thank. Now you all look out for this young lady because her heart is right, her spirituality is right, and she's got a lot of talent. You know that she's going that she's going to bring to the community through printed pages and a blog and a Facebook and other things. So I want to thank all three of you for uh, coming and, and, and imparting this information to the community. And uh, I want to encourage everybody, including Alex C. Habersham, you know, to take a look at the areas that Ms. Sims mentioned and then set some goals and then piece them up like the Fullers did and have a good year and this time next year when you measure where you are in January and where you ended up in December, you will be very, very proud and I'll be proud of you and myself too. This is a call to action. A call, call to, to action. action. I'm your host, Alex Haversham. Have a great day. www.makingblackpages.com